Hello there, this is Mrs. Hansen. I wanted to do a little extra support for this chapter. Stoichiometry is a very challenging topic, I understand. So I'm going to do some of the sapling questions, and hopefully this will assist you in earning full credit on your homework this week. We are studying stoichiometry, which to me is the three easy steps from mole to mole through a balanced chemical equation. What I have here is what I call my stoichiometry roadmap, and what I'm what I'm using it for is, you know, if you're like me, a visual learner, it helps us move from left to right as we solve this balanced equation. If we're given a mass of a substance from a chemical equation, we know to use what's called molar mass to convert into the mole. In our video notes, we talked about this as being the heart of our problem, our want over given mole ratio, and we head back out to the land of grams from the quantity that we want. We know to divide, ratio, multiply, the three steps of stoichiometry. Let's begin by looking at the first of your homework questions. Now remember, everyone's homework generates just a little different in terms of the quantities you're given and so forth, but it will give you a great model to do your homework by. Number one reads, we have a reaction between iron two oxide and we have carbon monoxide and it forms iron and carbon dioxide. The question begins with a balanced equation, so that part is done for us. How many moles of iron? So this is our target, and I'm just going to put that under there as we're looking for moles of iron. And we're reacting with 5.75 moles of the iron to oxide. And it tells us that we have excess carbon monoxide which is just extra words to say there's plenty of it there, there is no limiting reagent problem at all, it's just telling us you have plenty CO to make sure that all of the FeO is consumed. We call this a mole-mole problem, and visually on our roadmap, if we're given a mole and we want a mole, we know it's a one-step conversion where we do a want over given mole ratio. So we're in the heart of the problem, want over given ratio. Start by writing the number 5.75. The unit is mole and the substance is FeO. That's the quantity that's given. We'll set up a conversion factor where our heart of the problem says we want over given. Well, we want to know the moles of iron. Its coefficient is a 1. Starting from the moles of FeO, whose coefficient is also a 1. This couldn't be any simpler to start. 5.75 moles of FeO will yield the same quantity because of the mole to mole ratio of 1 to 1. In the letter B, it also is a mole mole problem. So again, visually, if we're given a mole and would like a mole, it's the one-step problem in the heart of our stoichiometry roadmap, a want over given mole ratio. It says the reaction between hydrochloric acid and aluminum produces hydrogen gas and aluminum chloride. The balanced chemical equation is given to us. How many moles of hydrogen can be obtained when five moles of HCl react? And we have excess amounts of aluminum, which is just telling us, no worries, there's plenty of it there to make sure all of the HCl is consumed. Given a mole, calculate a mole, we call this a mole-mole problem. Start by writing the number, the unit, and the label of the quantity given. We'll set up a want over given stoichiometric ratio, the heart of our problem, want over given, we want to know hydrogen. Its coefficient is a 3. We were given the quantity of HCl. Its coefficient is a 6. 5 times 3 halves. I'm sorry, 5 times 3 over 6, which is 1 half. 5 times 1 half is 2.5 moles of hydrogen. We did a mole-mole problem in each case. Remember the key sequence here would simply be on your calculator. 5 times 3 divided by 6, and you'll see it read 2.5. All right, let's keep going. Your second problem is also a mole-mole problem. For the following chemical reaction, 
How many moles of lead to iodide? PBI2 is our target. How many moles can be produced from six moles of Ki? We call Ki our given, and we call PBI2 what we want. Given a mole, calculate a mole. It's a one-step problem where we do the want over given stoichiometric ratio. We were given six moles of potassium iodide. We'll set up a conversion factor in the heart of our problem. We want to know PBI2. Its coefficient is a one. We started with moles of potassium iodide. Its coefficient is a two. One half of six comes out to be three. Our third question kind of opens up the mole map a little bit for us. It talks about producing small quantities of oxygen by heating potassium chlorate, and here's our balanced equation. We'd like to calculate how many grams of oxygen can be produced from 60.5 grams of potassium chlorate. Now let's get our visual map ready. Here we're all the way over to the left side of our stoichiometry road map, given a mass of potassium chlorate. We want to go all the way to the mass of what we want. That would be the oxygen grams. We can see that it'll be a three-step conversion where we divide by molar mass of given. We do a want over given stoichiometric ratio, and we multiply to head back out to the grams of want. Three steps to stoichiometry. Start by writing 60.5, the unit is grams, and the label is KCLO3. I've just written the mass of given. Then the visual says we need to times by one over the mass, which is molar mass, which is the sum of all of the weights of our compound off the periodic table. So I need to add a potassium, a chlorine, and three oxygens. K on the periodic table is 39.1. Chlorine on the periodic table is 35.5. And oxygen we'll call 16, and there's three of them there. So I'm going to sum on my calculator 39.1, add 35.5, add 16 times 3, and I get a grand total of 122.6. And that's the value that goes right here for the mass of our potassium chlorate. We then move into the heart of our problem, the want over given ratio. We could put that in a parenthesis. It represents our conversion factor. We want to know oxygen. Its coefficient is a three. We started from moles of potassium chlorate. Its coefficient is a two. The stoichiometric ratio is three halves. That was this part of our mole map, the want over given ratio. We're now ready for our last conversion where we multiply by molar mass of what we want. We want to know the grams of oxygen. The diatomic molar mass of O2 is adding two oxygens together to find 32 grams per mole. We've done it. We've set up all three steps to stoichiometry. Now we need to actually calculate. Let me remind us the key sequence. I would hit 60.5. Then that conversion, the molar mass is on the bottom, so I'm going to divide by 122.6. I'll then multiply by 3 divided by 2. And then the molar mass of 32 at the end is multiplied. And when we hit that on our calculator, we'll find grams of oxygen. 60.5. Divide by 122.6. <clears throat> times 3 over 2, times 32. 
23.68. I'm going to round there and say 23.68. Let's call that 0 0.7 to have one decimal point as the number in the problem gave us. 23.7 grams of oxygen. We worked a mass mass problem. We divide, we ratio, we multiply in a mass mass. All right, we're doing great work. Let's keep it going. Number four is very similar. This looks like a combustion pattern. How many moles of carbon dioxide? Here we want moles of carbon dioxide. When 29.1 grams of our fuel called octane is burned. Now get a visual. The unit you're given is mass, 29.1 grams of given. The unit we want to end at is moles. That's right here. In other words, I can see that I need a step one, divide to get into the mole. I need a step two, the heart of our problem, the want over given. And then I'm done. No step three needed because I only need to go as far as the moles of CO2, not the mass. We start by writing our number, 29.1 grams, with its unit and its label. My first conversion factor, which is right here, it says we need one mole of our given, which is the C8H18, set over its molar mass. So on our periodic table, carbon has an atomic weight of 12, but there's eight of them in the formula. Hydrogen has a molar mass of one, and there's 18 of those. Let's sum 12 carbons, 12 times 8, I'm sorry, 8 carbons at 12 apiece, plus the 18 total mass from the hydrogen, and we get a molar mass of 114 grams. 12 times 8 plus 18, 114 grams, and that goes right here as the molar mass of given, this quantity in our road map. We know that we need a next step, the heart of our problem, always want over given. We want the carbon dioxide. Its mole number is a 16 from the balanced equation. We're given the moles of fuel, which is 2 for the moles of octane. And we said we're done because we only need to go as far as moles of CO2. So that's why we're stopping, because the unit we asked for was moles. 29.1 divided by 114 times 16 divided by 2. 2.04 moles of carbon dioxide. Key sequence to repeat, 29.1 divided by 114 times 16 divided by 2. I just read that mathematical sentence left to right. In our fifth example, this is a little different in the sense that the quantity we're starting at is at moles of zinc. We're given 0.114 moles of zinc. That's our given. It reacts with excess lead force sulfate, meaning plenty of it there. It's not part of the math problem. We'd like to know how many grams of zinc sulfate would be produced. This time we're given a mole and want a gram. Now think about that on our road map. The unit we're starting at is a mole of zinc. And we want the mass of zinc sulfate. This is our starting point. We do not need to convert the mole. It's already given to us. So it's a step two, step three on our stoichiometry roadmap. 0.114 moles of zinc. We're in the heart of the problem already. We want zinc sulfate. Its coefficient is a two. Starting from mole of zinc, its coefficient is also a 2, so we have a 2 over 2 mole ratio. 
To convert to grams, we're here on the road map, we need the molar mass of zinc sulfate. The atomic weight of zinc is 65.4. The atomic weight of sulfur is 32. The atomic weight of oxygen is 16, and there's four of them there. I don't have a periodic table in front of me, so I'm doing the zinc by memory. So I'm going to just quickly Google atomic weight of zinc to check my work there. And it is 65.38, 65.4 was a reasonable guess, so I just wanted to be sure I didn't have an error, so thank you. All right, 65.4 plus 32 plus 16 times 4, and that is 161.4. So here, 161.4 grams is our target of zinc sulfate, and that's its mass per mole. We'll start by hitting point 114 times 2 over 2, you could choose to neglect that. And then times 161.4. And my calculator reads 18.399. So how about 18.4 grams? And that's of our zinc sulfate. Given a mole, we calculated a mass by following step two, step three on our stoichiometry roadmap. As I look at number six, this looks very similar. We're given a mass and asked to calculate a mass. I'm going to talk strategy here. If we're starting with a mass of given, we are given 43.7 grams of the HCl. We'd like to know how many grams of calcium hydroxide are needed to react. Given a mass, calculate a mass. Looks like all three steps are needed to move all the way from left to right. We'll divide by molar mass of given. We'll set up our want over given stoichiometric ratio. And we'll multiply in the last step by the molar mass of what we want. So you'll see the starting point, 43.7 grams of HCl. Your first conversion requires you to add the molar mass of an H and Cl. Hydrogen we know is 1, chlorine we know is 35.5, so our total weight 36.5 grams. In your second conversion, in the heart of our problem is our want over given mole ratio. The coefficient of our target calcium hydroxide is a 1. The coefficient from our given target HCl is a 2. We have a 1 half stoichiometric ratio. And in the last target, this last conversion, we need the molar mass of what we want to multiply. So we need to add calcium hydroxide's molar mass. Calcium on our periodic table is 40. Oxygen is 16, but remember this 2 distributes to both, so there's two of them. And the same with hydrogen, there's two of them because the 2 distributes through the parentheses. Let's add 40 plus 16 times 2 plus 2. And we get a molar mass of 74 grams. That's calcium hydroxide's molar mass. Our key sequence We'll start with 43.7. We divide by 36.5. We multiply by 1 over 2. And then multiply again by 74. And let's hit that together for a common answer. 43.7 divide by 36.5 times 1 over 2 times 74. Now I have 44.298, how about rounding 44.3 grams of calcium hydroxide.
I hope these are helping for us. A common lab method for preparing oxygen involves the decomposition of potassium chlorate. We looked at this very equation a little bit earlier. Based on this equation, how many grams of KClO3 must be decomposed to yield the following amounts? Letter A, 5.35 moles of the first product, KCl, and letter B, 41.7 grams of the oxygen. These are two separate problems. So let's talk about letter A first. Letter A, the given quantity is right here. It's moles of KCl. We want the mass of KClO3. For letter A, we're starting here at moles of given and we want to go to mole or a, a mass. So here we have a step two, step three on the stoichiometry roadmap. I'm going to start by writing 5.35 moles of KCl. That's this part here. My first conversion is the heart of our problem, our want over given mole ratio. We want to know the reactant, KClO3, its coefficient is a 2. We're given the moles of KCl, its coefficient is also a 2. That's this part, want over given mole ratio. We need to bring it all the way to a gram, so we need a step 3. We need the molar mass of our target. We need to add a K, a Cl, an O3. I was pausing because I thought we did that a little bit ago. 39.1 is potassium. We have chlorine at 35.5. And oxygen is 16, but there's three of them, so let's sum that again. Maybe you have that in your notes already, but I'm going to hit it. And that's 122.6. So that's what we need right here. Alrighty, so starting with 5 point, and again this is letter A, starting with 5.35 moles of the first product times 2 over 2 times 122.6 and we would need 655.9 grams of our reactant. 655.9 grams is what I would need to start with to produce the, the quantity of product. So there's the answer to letter A. It was a two-step. We started here at the, the mole, so we went to the heart of the problem. We multiplied to get back out to grams. What about letter B? Letter B is completely unrelated. It's saying, now, all right, let's suppose instead of concentrating on KCL, this time we want to make it the target of oxygen. So I'm going to erase what's here and start afresh for letter B. So here comes the letter B. What's given to me here now is 41.7 grams of oxygen. That's this end of the, the stoichiometry map. And again, we still want grams of KClO3. We have all three steps. We'll divide, we'll ratio, we'll multiply in a mass-mass problem. Step one, we'll need to divide by the molar mass of molecular oxygen, which is 32 grams. That's this conversion, one mole over the molar mass of given. That takes us to the heart of our problem, our want over given ratio. We want to know KClO3, its coefficient is a 2. We're starting from oxygen, its coefficient is a 3. So those are the two we're comparing. And a moment ago, I just hit the molar mass of our target, 122.6 is the molar mass of KClO3. So I'm just reusing that from letter A. 
41.7 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times the 122.6 and this one is 106.5 106.5 grams of potassium chlorate. So even though this was one question, it was really a part A, part B, two separate stoichiometry problems. Part A was a mole mass problem, and part B was a mass mass problem, and you'll have to enter both into your sapling. This is the same strategy, number eight. How many grams of oxygen given grams of water? A mass mass problem. With number eight, you have 21 point zero grams of water. This is the given. And you want to know grams of oxygen. So without going into great detail, you'll set up by starting with 21 grams of water. Your first conversion will use the molar mass of water. Your next conversion will be the heart of the problem your want over given mole ratio. You want the oxygen, its coefficient is a one. Given the water, its coefficient is a two. And in the last step, you'll need the molar mass of what you want, which is the oxygen. So the three steps where you divide by molar mass of water, you ratio want over given stoichiometric mole ratio, and you'll multiply by the molar mass of want, which is oxygen. We've done plenty of those. I'm sure you can follow the pathway. I'm going to pause this here. We have worked mole, mole, mass, mass, and a variety within. In the next video, we'll look at limiting reagents, excess reagents, and percent yields.